to The Hypnotist, the show that gives you inside access to cutting-edge hypnosis with real clients facing genuine issues. Brought to you by the hypnotherapist demanded by celebrities, CEOs, and even royalty, Adam Cox. These recordings took place live from Evans Clinic in London's world-famous Harley Street. So, get yourself comfortable and enjoy today's episode of The Hypnotist. Hi, it's Adam here, and on today's episode of The Hypnotist, you're going to be listening to a session that I did with a lady that wanted to lose weight, and we actually used a very specific uh, approach within weight loss hypnosis called the virtual gastric band. Now, effectively, what happens with the virtual gastric band is that the uh, client perceives um, that they are being uh, going through an, a general anesthetic or a local anesthetic to experience a form of bariatric surgery where a band is placed around the stomach so that rather than it being kind of like one stomach, it almost kind of shrinks into two different um, kind of sections, the top and the lower half of the stomach. Um, and, and effectively, that encourages people to eat smaller portions, have gaps between meals, and chew their food more thoroughly. Uh, and you'll hear throughout this session various um, metaphors, um, a, a guided visualization of experiencing the surgery, either associated or disassociated. Uh, and it's very, very powerful because it enables someone to work with the idea of reducing the amount that they eat. And obviously, the, the hypnosis session itself doesn't make people lose weight, but the hypnosis session can create a framework for people to make decisions unconsciously that the side effect of that over time is that because they're eating less and eating better, then weight loss is just a natural side effect of that. This is going to be great if you overeat, if your portion sizes would be considered too large, if you're having more calories, or if you're just kind of binging and just kind of guzzling food in without even appreciating that, this is going to be a very useful session for you. And the great thing is you can listen to it as many times as is useful until that belief really solidifies that your stomach is smaller and therefore you need to eat in a certain way to align with this new gastric band that's been um, placed in there. Um, some people genuinely believe that they have a gastric band after the hypnosis. Other people simply use it as a metaphor, uh, as a useful framework to making decisions about how much they should eat or could eat to enable them to lose weight. Whatever experience you have, in all honesty, doesn't matter so long as it's useful and starts taking you in the direction of the behaviors that will actually get you to the kind of person you want to be. Um, but appreciate any feedback or thoughts you have, just put them in the comments. Uh, it's really useful for me. Um, there'll be a minute or so of relaxing music before the hypnosis starts. So just find somewhere comfortable where you won't be disturbed, relax and enjoy.
And as you breathe in, I want you to use the power of your imagination to imagine that you're breathing in a feeling of calm and relaxation. Breathing in relaxation and breathing out tension. And I want you to use your imagination to imagine that that feeling of calmness and relaxation is a color, maybe a bright, warm color. And as you breathe in that feeling of relaxation, imagine that that relaxation is going to the very parts of your body that needs it most. In the same way that your heart can extract oxygen from a breath and distribute that to every cell in your body, I want you to imagine that your heart is now extracting that calmness, that relaxation, that tranquility. So as you breathe in that warm color, your heart extracts that relaxation and starts to distribute it just like oxygen to every cell in your body. Getting a sense that you're breathing in relaxation and breathing out tension. Therefore, within each and every breath, you're feeling deeper and deeper and deeper relaxed. Now, you already know how to go into that deep sense of relaxation. And there's many places that you naturally go to, either in real life or just in your imagination. Safe, secure, relaxing places. But if you were in that place, you would feel so relaxed. And I want you to imagine that the exact same sofa that you're sitting on right now is not in your home, but is in a relaxing place outdoors on a warm, sunny day. No one else around, just you. There's blue skies, there's sunshine, and there's that sofa. And you can position your body to make yourself more comfortable, either in your mind or in real life, to get an overall sense that you're on a relaxing sofa in a relaxing place, completely private, still breathing in that warm feeling of relaxation. Deeper and deeper relaxed, that's right. And as you breathe in that warm feeling of relaxation, I want you to really focus on the tiny muscles around your eyelids and eyes. In uncertain times, there can be more anxiety and tension than at other times. And I want you to scan the muscles in and around your eyelids, eyebrows, and around the eyes, just to detect if there's any feelings of tension, become aware of any tension, and as you breathe in that warm feeling of relaxation, imagine that that warm feeling is melting away any and all tension in and around the eyes. And then as you breathe out, just imagine you're releasing that tension. Now, that's right. Going deeper and deeper relax. Now scan those muscles in your forehead. Those same muscles responsible for different facial expressions like surprise or concern or curiosity. Become aware of any and all tension in and around your forehead, creeping up to your scalp, and even on the edge where your hair follicles meet your skin, that's right. Scan for any tension and you become aware of any tension. Imagine it's melting away, releasing. And let go of that tension now as you breathe out, just going deeper and deeper and deeper relaxed. That's right. Focusing now on the muscles in your cheeks and jaw. And I almost want you to try and create tension there. Try and create tension in your jaw, because sometimes tension is only noticeable when you exaggerate, and when you exaggerate, you become aware, become aware of that tension, and then simply let go of that tension. Release the tension. Allow the muscles in the jaw to relax and go completely relaxed now. That's right, letting go of that. And now being aware of any muscles in your neck and your shoulders. 
again temporarily try and create even more tension than there normally would be. Create the tension in the neck, around the shoulders, create that tension, and then take a deep breath in. Imagine that warm feeling of relaxation, melting away that tension, and then when you breathe out, just release and relax that tension. Feeling at least 10 times more deeply relaxed than it was before. The law of contrast works in many different ways. And become aware now of any tension in and around your arms. The muscles in your arms, the biceps, the triceps, the forearms, even muscles in your fingers. First scan for any feelings of tension. And then create that tension, create that tension now, create the tension in the arms all the way down clenching your fists together, becoming aware of that tension, breathing in that warm feeling of relaxation, and then letting go of that tension, releasing that tension, feeling deeply, deeply relaxed now. As you start to imagine your internal organs, imagine your heart, your lungs, your stomach, and imagine that warm feeling of relaxation going in through your nose and filling inside your body with that sense of relaxation. Imagine that your lungs, your diaphragm are just relaxing now. Therefore imagine your heart relaxing now. Imagine your stomach relaxing. Even the whole part of your digestive system, including your gut, your intestines, it's all just relaxing now. Allow that relaxation to pass into your legs. Become aware of any tension in your legs and then create an artificial amount of tension in your legs. Tense all the muscles in your legs right down to your calf, even to your toes. Become aware of that tension. Feel the tension. Imagine breathing in that warm feeling of relaxation and then just let go of that tension. Feeling completely and totally relaxed. That's right. And I want you to imagine in this place, on that sofa, you're feeling completely and totally relaxed. And I'm going to count down from five to one, and I want you to imagine that you're about to fall asleep on that sofa, in that place. Five, just feeling that inner desire to yawn. Four, a heavy sinking feeling across your whole body. Three. Feeling like your eyelids are just so, so heavy. Two. Feeling like that sensation just before you naturally nod off. And one. Just imagine that you're falling asleep. And I want you to imagine that you have fallen asleep. And actually, you're now able to see yourself asleep on that sofa. And you are simply a figment of your own imagination looking at yourself asleep on a sofa in a very relaxing environment. And somewhere nearby is a table. And on that table is a complex puzzle. And it doesn't have to be a picture puzzle. It can be made of objects, but just know that on that table is a puzzle or problem that needs to be solved. Perhaps on that table or nearby that table, there is a chair. And I want you to imagine that you're taking a seat on that chair, looking at that puzzle. And even if a particular puzzle doesn't come to mind, just know that there is some kind of problem or puzzle on that table. Because that will attract the interest of the logical, analytical, problem-solving part of your unconscious mind. That part will want to solve this problem. It's a complex problem, it's a complex puzzle, it can't be solved immediately. And I want you to allow the logical, analytical, problem-solving part of your unconscious mind to just dwell, focus and get lost in this puzzle. Allow that part to continue doing that. As there is another part of your unconscious mind, a part that wants a future better health, more confidence, more self-esteem and more opportunities, more freedom. Allow that part to keep walking. 
And as you turn around, you can now see there is a conscious part fast asleep on a very comfortable white sofa. And there is the analytical part desperately trying to solve a problem or a puzzle. But I'm now communicating the part that wants change. That is happy to make changes, but maybe needs support in making those changes. And if I'm communicating to that part, just let me know by nodding your head. That's right. And I want you to keep walking. And even if it is not suitable to be in this place, I want you to see that there is a doorway. A doorway and just know that this doorway, and it doesn't need to be attached to a building, this doorway is going to take you to a clinic or a hospital. The doorway is simply a portal. And if you can imagine what that door looks like, maybe made of wood or glass or metal, I want you to imagine you're standing in front of that door and I will count down from five to one and you will imagine walking through that door and suddenly you will be in the waiting area of a clinic or a hospital. Starting to count five. Being aware of the door, four. Approaching the door, maybe opening a handle or getting close. If it's automatic doors, they will automatically open. Three, starting to walk through the door, two allowing yourself to go through the door, allowing the door to close behind you, one and zero, and you are now in this waiting area of a clinic or a hospital. And whatever image comes to mind is completely fine for you, but just know that you are in a safe, clean, very hygienic place with only the best possible practitioners. It's not a busy hospital, there's hardly anyone there. And you are guided to a waiting area and you're the only one in the waiting area. It's almost like it's a private waiting area just for you. And in that waiting area, there is a TV screen which explains the procedure of a gastric band. As you look upon the screen, it's a large screen, and it shows you an inner representation of what your own stomach looks like. And normally a stomach is a very stretchy and dynamic organ. Your stomach can get larger if you eat big portions, and it can get small if you eat lots of small portions or drink lots of liquids. There is a narrator explaining what's happening with this virtual or actual gastric band. You can see the shape of a stomach, and you can see that that stomach has the ability to get larger or smaller depending on how much food is eaten. The narrator then explains that if a, bar, a band is attached and wrapped around the central part of a stomach, when the stomach is at its smallest that it could possibly be, it then changes the shape to that where the stomach is no longer a stomach shape, but more like the shape of a sand timer, but diagonally positioned. The narrator explains that by having it in this way, if the person that has the band attached eats smaller portions of food, the food waits at the top part of the stomach before slowly being broken down by stomach acids moves into the second part of the stomach before continuing its journey throughout the digestive system. The band does not lose the weight for the individual, but simply helps the patient to make better choices. The people that truly get the value from the gastric band are not those that the band forces them to eat less. The people that really get the benefit from the band are those that understand that the band is being used as a tool to help them. In the same way that someone with a broken leg does not expect the crutches to walk for them, but is simply a tool to assist them in walking themselves. The person that truly gets the value from a gastric band treats it in the same way as crutches to a broken leg. It's not designed to lose the weight for them, but to support them in making choices and behaviors 
that then naturally lead the body to lose weight. The narrator also explains that this procedure takes place by making a small incision close to the ribs and a tiny microscopic camera gets passed through a tiny tube that leads from the incision to the stomach. The surgeons can see what's going on and they loop the band around the stomach before tightening it from the inside and then taking everything back out. If this process and procedure and rationale makes sense, just let me know by nodding your head. That's right. At this point, a very kind person comes into the waiting room and informs you that the anaesthetist is ready. You are led into a small room, not the surgeon's room just yet, but a very comfortable bed. Currently, you're sitting upright and the anaesthetist, anaesthetist explains that you have two options. You can have general anaesthetic or you can have local anaesthetic. And if you would like the local anaesthetic to be aware of what is happening while the procedure is taking place, just let me know by nodding your head. That's right. And I want you to imagine that the anaesthetist is now carrying out whatever process is required to make sure there is absolutely zero pain in and around the stomach and in and around the incision that would be made to enable the gastric band to be attached to the central part of the stomach. You feel a tingling sensation, a numbing sensation, similar to the sensation you may have had in a dentist where just that part of your jaw feels all numb, but you're completely aware of what is happening. It's like that, but just in a different place. You feel it around your stomach area, and it just feels a bit strange, but you're completely aware of what is happening. The anaesthetist says that since you're under local anaesthetic, you could, if you choose to, have music being played on in the background that might help take your attention off what is happening. If you would like the idea of music being played while the surgery takes place, just let me know by nodding your head. And if you don't care, then that's right. So I want you to imagine what kind of music could be playing. The anaesthetist says goodbye, and the porter wheels you in to the surgery room. You can see it's a very clean, very hygienic environment. You can see the surgeons putting on the masks, scrubbing their hands, it has the overall smell of being very clean. No germs, no bacteria whatsoever. The music starts to play and I want you to focus your attention on what that music might be like. You have a sense of the smell of hygiene. You have the sound of that music being played. You have that numb sensation right there around your stomach. They then lower the headrest so you're now lying flat there are bright lights above you but you choose to close your eyes and just focus on the music the surgeon has already introduced themselves and you feel that you are in safe hands you feel completely comfortable and safe in this environment the surgeon has assistance to make sure that the surgeon has all the tools required to carry out the procedure. And you already know what that procedure is going to be, but the surgeon explains what's happening while it's happening. There is a screen on a table next to you. The surgeon explains that he's gonna make a small incision just near your rib cage. He tells you you won't be able to feel anything, and indeed you don't. You're aware that something has happened, but only because the surgeon is telling you. The surgeon then feeds a tiny tube in that incision, and at the end of that tube is attached a microscopic, very tiny camera. The surgeon is able to see 
when he finally gets there, your stomach. There is another tube, and attached to that tube is the gastric band. The surgeon uses a combination of what he can see on the screen and feedback from other things that is happening around to become aware of exactly where is the right place to loop the gastric band around the central part of the stomach. He does that. He explains that that's what's happening and yet you feel nothing. Your attention is still focused on the music that is happening and being played around you. Even on the screen, as the stomach gets tightened around the middle section where the band gets contracted and set at exactly the right level to still mean that you can eat food and still enable food to pass from your stomach into the digestive system, but to restrict the size at which the stomach can now become. That natural dynamic nature of a stomach to get as big as it needs to is no longer feasible with this band attached in the middle. But again, the surgeon reminds you that the band is not there to force your body to lose weight. The band is there as a gentle reminder. The surgeon explains that to really help your body to learn to work with the gastric band, you would need to now imagine that a good portion to eat is the size of your fist holding a golf ball or a squash ball. Not the size of a golf ball or a squash ball, but the size of your fist holding that ball. The equivalent of a small or a medium sized plate, but certainly not a standard plate. He explains that from this point onwards, your stomach is going to look a little bit like a sand timer at a diagonal location. He explains that in order to really benefit to the maximum level of this gastric band, you would imagine, you would imagine that by chewing your food really well will give you two key benefits. Firstly, you can extract more value, more pleasure, more taste from whatever food you choose to eat. But secondly, it would also mean that your food can pass from the top to the bottom section of your now slightly altered stomach shape. And if this makes sense, just let me know by nodding your head. The surgeon explains that to make sure you don't feel like you're missing out, given that you're going to eat less food, it makes sense to spend more on the food that you do eat, to take more time to prepare the food, enjoy the smell, the look, the texture of the foods. The overall lesson is that if you eat less, enjoy it more. And if this makes sense, just let me know by nodding your head. So you will eat better, but eat less. You will chew more. And you will chew your food without other distractions. The surgeon recommends that to really get the main value from eating your food, it's better to do it without other devices like TV screens or tablets or mobile phones around. He explains that given that you're going to be eating less, you may as well enjoy that so much more. He also explains that now that your stomach is like a sand timer, it's useful to imagine that it takes about four hours for the food to pass from the top part of the stomach to the bottom part of the stomach. But this is only when you're eating food that needs to be chewed. In between those meals, you could still choose to have a glass of water or a juice or even a smoothie, and it wouldn't impact your body's ability to still digest food at the normal rate. But in terms of meals that you need to chew, the surgeon is recommending four hours 
in between meals to really give your stomach time for the food to pass from the top to the bottom and then pass through your digestive system. His final tip is that food that digests really quickly, such as fruit or vegetables, should really be eaten first before the food that takes longer to digest. The example he gives that if you were going to eat a meal for the main meal and a piece of melon for dessert, it's better to have the melon beforehand because the melon would easily pass from the top to the bottom of the stomach and therefore not ferment in your own stomach. And if this makes sense based on how your new stomach is structured and shaped, let me know by nodding your head. That's right. He then informs you that the operation has been a success and that he is starting to take the tubes and the camera back out through that tiny incision near to your ribs. He explains that he doesn't need stitches because the incision is too small. He just places tiny amounts of glue that just attach the skin together at that very incision. He explains that you won't need to come back because after a few days the glue will just fall away and you don't need to do anything other. He says just don't touch the glue or the incision and everything will be fine. He then takes you or well, the porter takes you to a recovery room, at which point you fall asleep in that recovery room, having a graphic detailed dream of what your future now looks like. With the additional help, you now see a future where it isn't a challenge to eat smaller portions. You simply are choosing to have smaller portions, knowing that if you're going to eat less, you're going to eat the finest foods that you can afford. You look forward to chewing your food slowly, thoroughly, extracting all of the tastes and flavors possible. And you decide to make it your mission to eat food consciously, mindfully, enjoyably. You can't help but whenever you think about your stomach to think of it as a sand timer a sand timer slightly on its side and therefore it becomes very easy for you to naturally want to chew your food so thoroughly to naturally have smaller portions and to naturally have a nice amount of time in between foods that require chewing now to begin with it takes a bit of practice you have decades of chewing and eating foods in a different way. But there is a principle called neuroplasticity, which is essentially the brain's ability to adapt and create new neural pathways. And those new neural pathways can become unconscious ways of thinking. I want you to imagine that this is like anything else that you've learned. It requires a bit of practice and repetition, but before you know it, this is simply how you shop, how you eat, how you prepare and how you chew. You naturally don't want to eat in between meals because it would mean delaying those delicious meals for something of low value. You certainly don't want to eat very large portions because that could risk forcing the gastric band to slip. But this gastric band is different to most gastric bands because if there are ever occasions where you eat too much, I want you to imagine simply by having a day or two of eating small portions, chewing them well, you can imagine the gastric band forming exactly as it was when it was initially installed. Effectively, this is a gastric band that can always go back to its original position simply by a day or two of eating small portions 
or having mainly liquids. And if this makes sense, let me know by nodding your head. That's right. The final part of this vivid dream is seeing what changes will take place to your body when this becomes unconscious, a daily habit, just choosing to eat and live this way. As the days turn into weeks, turn into months, turn into years, your body is transforming. You've made the choice to work with rather than against your gastric band. You don't mind having small portions because you just enjoy the food so much. You naturally chew your food more, not because you have to, but because you want more pleasure from your food. And your body is changing in accordance. You notice that you're snacking less or hardly at all. You notice that you really take pleasure in preparing and choosing and eating and enjoying and smelling your foods and your body changes. I want you to imagine that several months have passed in this dream, this vivid dream, and you see yourself, you catch a reflection of yourself perhaps in a shop window and just notice at how much weight you've lost. But what you've lost in weight, you've gained in confidence, a new sense of certainty. Your energy just feels different. And in this dream, I want you to imagine that you're bumping into an old friend or an old colleague that hasn't seen you for maybe six months or more. I want you to notice their facial expression and how your body has transformed. The words they use, wow, you look great. You've lost so much weight. And notice how good it makes you feel to have successfully transformed and evolved into the very best version of you. And if this future not only feels desirable but achievable, let me know by nodding your head. That's right. And I want you to imagine that it's now time. You've had a good sleep. Your body, the anesthetic has worn off, but you still feel no pain around that stomach area. But you leave this clinic knowing that there is now a band around your stomach. And that you are going to do the things necessary to work with that band to give you the future that you desire. As you leave that clinic, you walk out of the same door that you arrived in and you find yourself out there in a very relaxing area. You find yourself able to see two different versions of you. You see a version of you fast asleep on a white sofa in a relaxing area, but you also see an analytical part of you still trying to solve a puzzle or a problem. And I want you to walk up to the problem solving part, that critical analytical part. And I want you to climb in to their body, but also feel that that gastric band is still there. Now the analytical part is now the part I'm communicating with. The analytical part completely accepts that the band is there, but the band is not there to lose the weight for you. The band is there to give you guidance, signpost you, prompt you to make certain choices. And I want the analytical part to now realize that the problem it's been trying to solve all this time is this problem. How do you lose weight and enjoy the process? That's now the question that the analytical part is attempting to solve. How do you lose weight and truly enjoy the process? Now the analytical part may have an answer straight away, but you might find that as the days go by, the analytical part is still trying to solve that problem. And what a beautiful problem it is to solve. All parts are now in the same body as you see the conscious part of you. 
lying there on that white sofa and I want all parts to climb into that part completely relaxed on that sofa I want you to adjust your body and feel feel that that sand timer shaped stomach is still with inside you and know that that means that you'll be making choices because you want to make those choices you may be eating less but that means you're going to be even more determined to eat better you're going to chew your food not because you have to but because you want more pleasure from the food that you eat you will leave gaps in between meals not because you have to but because you want to because it's helping your body create the future that you desire. In a few moments time, I want you to imagine that you're going to wake up fully alert as I count from one to 10. You will awaken in the very room that you are now, fully wide awake, with a sense of optimism, a sense of excitement for the future, but a sense of pragmatism and a sense that the logical analytical part will be determined to solve the problem as to how you can lose weight and enjoy the process. You will awaken in this moment with all normal sensations returning to your arms and legs and you will awaken with all parts, particularly the resourceful parts, waking up and being fully associated into the moment. Starting to count to awaken you. One, two, three, waking up. Four, five, six, more alert. Seven, eight, open your eyes, open your eyes. Nine, ten, wide awake, wide awake, wide awake. Thank you for listening to The Hypnotist with Adam Cox, the show that gives you inside access to cutting edge hypnosis with real clients facing genuine issues. To automatically receive the latest episodes, please subscribe. If you'd like to support the show, please share this episode with just one friend you think it could help. And if this episode helped you, please leave us a five-star review.